So I know I've said before that like spiral galaxies are my favorite because they're just so beautiful, but of the weird stuff, it's gotta be the jellyfish. So jellyfish galaxies are this weird type of galaxy that we often see in groups or clusters of galaxies where they've had their gas sort of stripped off in this really long tail behind them. So they end up looking like jellyfish. So a galaxy is kind of like a city of stars. Our own galaxy is the Milky Way. It's got about a billion stars in it. And it's sort of like an island of stars in space. And everywhere we look, we see these other islands of stars that we call galaxies. Sometimes these galaxies are on their own in sort of empty regions of space. And sometimes they're clustered together under their own gravity in groups of like five, 10, 20, or sometimes huge clusters of hundreds of galaxies. And so we tend to only see the jellyfish galaxies in these groups or clusters, we think because of the fact that it's this like environmental effect. So the closer into the center of a group or cluster you get, the higher the fraction of non-star forming galaxies you get. So there must be some process by which when galaxies fall into that cluster, they have their gas stripped or heated up or expelled from the galaxy in some way so that they don't have any fuel left for star formation. And there's lots of different theories for how this can happen, lots of different like mechanisms, but one of them, which gets sort of a lot of press, is called ram pressure stripping. And it's this that we think is responsible for the jellyfish galaxies. But the stars don't get stripped by ram pressure stripping, it's just the gas, because the stars are much heavier. So they're much more tightly bound by gravity than the gas. Whereas the gas, you know, it's just a fluid of very small particles. And so it really easily gets stripped because it's not very well held by the gravity of the galaxy. So the pressure comes from the fact that the galaxy is experiencing this force by falling in to this cluster region, kind of like a wind. So the first time I had ram pressure stripping explained to me, it was during my um, PhD like lecture course and the lecturer said that it is like riding a bike so fast that all of your hair falls out. <laughs> and so I have been terrified to ride a bike ever since. <laughs> and the reason that ram pressure stripping we think could be so effective is because the gas in between all the galaxies in that cluster is incredibly, incredibly hot because it gives out x-rays. And so we know that something has to be incredibly energetic for it to give out such energetic radiation. And the kind of x-rays that this gas gives out is what we call bremsstrahlung radiation, which I hope is pronounced right, but I've butchered German words on this channel before, so... I'm not sure, but we're going with Bremsstrahlung. And it effectively translates as breaking radiation. So what happens is um, electrons are decelerated by going past larger atoms. So they fly past, their path is curved and they're decelerated by the sort of gravitational interaction between the two things. The problem is if you decelerate an electron, then you reduce its energy. And so that energy has to go somewhere. And in this case, it's given out as X-ray radiation. So the same way that in a car, you know, you, you decelerate your car, the energy has to go somewhere from you reducing your speed. And in that case, the brakes obviously heat up and you get kinetic energy out of braking your car. Instead of kinetic energy, we get X-rays out of braking electrons. But the reason we think that gas is hot though, I think is really interesting. So. In a cluster of galaxies, you tend to have very massive galaxies and the most massive galaxies have the most massive, supermassive black holes at their center. Now, if you feed those supermassive black holes by funneling gas down into the center of the gravitational well that is that cluster, then they're gonna grow, yes, but some of that material, then it's sort of gonna get too high pressure around the black hole for it to actually accrete all of that material. And so some of it gets thrown out in these huge radiation jets going at the speed of light away from the black hole. And it's those jets that we think heat the gas in between all the galaxies in the group or the cluster. So if you're wondering what kind of speed that these galaxies are actually infalling on these cluster of galaxies, well, there was one of them that was found, uh, ESO 137001, fascinating name, I know, but it was traveling at 4.5 million miles an hour, which is like 7.2 million kilometers an hour through a cluster we call the Norma Cluster. So, I mean, you can kind of tell with that kind of speed, like no wonder, like it has such an effect on the stuff inside the galaxy so that you get these huge jellyfish tails. The cool thing is though, as well as being stripped, at the same time you have all these other processes going on caused by the shocks and also then the pressure of it pushing the gas down. And so you do end up compressing some of the gas 
in the sort of tentacles uh, away from the galaxy that actually end up forming stars. And so you can end up with these star forming regions that sort of end up peppering along those gas trails that really do make it look like the galaxy has got tentacles. So these jellyfish galaxies have been studied for a couple of decades now trying to help us understand this process of ram pressure stripping and whether it's responsible for the fact that we see you know, less star forming things towards the center of clusters, despite the fact that these jellyfish galaxies, they're not very common, they're quite rare still. So if ram pressure stripping is responsible for all of the non-star forming galaxies we see in clusters, surely we should see more jellyfish as well, but we don't, so there must be something else going on here. One of my favorite results though, was a group led by Moretti et al in 2018, and they found one of these jellyfish galaxies that was actually a ring galaxy like Hoag's object. So some of you might have seen my previous video on Hoag's object, there's this really cool galaxy that's like 100,000 light years across with a sort of spheroid in the middle that's sort of yellowish and sort of not forming any stars. And this bright blue ring of star formation that's clearly separated out from that central component. But these people have found something that looks like this that is also a jellyfish galaxy in falling on a cluster. So something that's incredibly rare already to have one of these very precise rings and then also to be a jellyfish. So it's like finding a needle in a needle stack. Like they're incredibly rare. What's really cool though, is you can see that star formation is actually stopped in one side of the ring where it's closest to the center of the cluster and it's been stripped away from that side and it's still star forming in the other side as the gas travels through it, which is really, really cool. One of the main groups is led by Bianca Poggianti um, and they had a really cool paper back in 2017 that looked about seven of these jellyfish galaxies with a really cool instrument called Muse. Now Muse is what we call an integral field unit instrument. So instead of taking one single measurement of the galaxy, so in, in this case, it would be a single measurement of a, a spectra where you take the light from the galaxy, split it through a prism and you get the sort of trace of light and trace of elements in the galaxy. Instead of one, you take, you know, a hundred arrayed in a mosaic. So you get this sort of like jigsaw puzzle pieces of spectra of a galaxy. And so what that actually allows you to do is get this sort of what we call a data cube, which you can either think as an image of the galaxy at every single wavelength or a spectra at every single pixel in the image. It's really, really detailed. And like the data that you get from Muse is incredible. Like every time I go to conferences, everybody wants to go to the Muse talks and just like drool over the data on the presentations that people are showing because it's just so, so cool. Also, I love the fact that they then get to call their talks at these conferences, like really, really clever things. Like one of my favorite ones I ever went to was called Dissecting Jellyfish with Muse, which just, sounds like a really fun science class with a rock band to me. <laughs> Which personally I would love to do, you know, like if Matt Bellamy ever wants to dissect a jellyfish, I am there. <laughs> but what Piagianti and her collaborators found is that of these seven jellyfish galaxies they looked at, the ones with like the longest tails and the most effect from ram pressure stripping actually had these growing supermassive black holes in the center. These things that we call active galactic nuclei or AGN black holes that are growing, but also probably outflowing material in some way, either in a jet or a wind itself inside the galaxy. And so the idea that they had was that perhaps ram pressure stripping wasn't just driving the gas out of the galaxy and stopping star formation, it might also be funneling gas into the black hole and feeding the black hole in the same process. And so the big question was then, well, is it actually ram pressure stripping that's causing the jellyfish tails or is it that you fed the black hole in some other way and that's causing the jellyfish tails? Sort of like a, a chicken and an egg situation. But they could look for other clues in the cluster that would lead them to figure out which one it was. So when they actually looked, they found that those galaxies with the long jellyfish tail and with these active galactic nuclei, these active supermassive black holes, they were closer into the center of the cluster of galaxies. So if they were randomly scattered instead, it would suggest that maybe it was just the supermassive black hole driving winds that caused these jellyfish tails. But because the closer in they got, the more likely they were to see these jellyfish galaxies with AGN, it suggested that actually it was due to the fact that the closer in they got to the center of the cluster, the greater that ram pressure stripping was. And so it was probably caused by the ram pressure stripping. But to confirm that is very difficult. What we need to do is run simulations of this happening as well on our computers to figure out if we put all the laws of physics in, you know, this is actually what you get out. 
problem is when they wrote that work in 2017, no one had actually done a simulation where you had both ground pressure stripping from a galaxy falling in on the environment and feedback from this active supermassive black hole as well. But the really interesting thing was that the year before this work came out, so in 2016, there have been two independent groups running different simulation codes that have both found that when they simulated RAM pressure stripping on a galaxy, it wasn't as effective as like a mechanism for stripping gas as they first thought. So there was one led by Emmerich and collaborators and one led by Fillingham and collaborators. And they both found that like ram pressure stripping was maybe stripping about like 40 to 60% of the gas in a galaxy, but not all of it. I.e. not enough to like fully stop the galaxy from forming stars. But Bianca Poggianti's work that suggested that the AGN was also giving off these winds that could help to further strip the galaxy might be the answer to that. Both the supermassive black hole and the round pressure stripping working together to fully get rid of all the gas in a galaxy so that it can't form any more stars in the future. No one has yet simulated that though. So I'm really excited to see like what future results from simulations will tell us about how maybe RAM pressure stripping along with um, feedback from the supermassive black hole can actually maybe work together to fully strip the gas from a galaxy. And this is the part of science that I hate the most and it's just the waiting game part, right? Waiting for the results to come out so that we can chat about them. Um, maybe we'll have to wait a year, maybe two, I don't know, but until then, you'll just find me staring at more beautiful pictures of jellyfish galaxies. Ooh, I'm getting hungry. Me so hungry, me so hungry. Do you mind, Mr. Motorbike? You're very loud. You can't take my hair. You just can't take it. You can't have the hair. You know, if you've ever seen anything that looks like a mermaid or a dinosaur, like send it me immediately. <laughs> I can't do it. <laughs>